Today, I want to share a few key things that every front-end developer should know, but many don't. These aren't just your standard, random, obvious skills, but rather these are things that either I didn't initially know I needed to learn, or things that I've seen even experienced developers lack knowledge in. First up is going to be accessibility and how it relates to the web. Most of your users won't be using the website in the exact same way that you do. Some will use a keyboard and a mouse, while others might use a touchscreen. Some will use a monitor as the primary source of information, while others might use a screen reader. As front-end developers, one of our jobs is to make sure that our applications work for as many potential users as possible. Specifically, there are a few key things that you can learn about. First of all, try to get familiar with how these accessibility tools actually work. The most important concept here is going to be the accessibility tree. This contains most of the information that these tools read from. Next, take some time to familiarize yourself with the various ARIA HTML attributes, which can be used to control information of that accessibility tree and help improve the user experience for many users. Next, related to accessibility is going to be semantic HTML. All too often, our HTML pages turn into these giant trees of divs, and believe me, this is something I have been guilty of myself. However, when we do this, we give less information about the content of our page to whatever is reading our HTML. As a result, it can be much more difficult for accessibility tools to interpret our content. It also can just hurt SEO or search engine optimization, as well as this just causes problems for any other scenario where a computer might need to understand our markup. Now, moving on from HTML, you should also take time to really master CSS layout. Particularly, you want to master the box model, position properties, flexbox, and grid. CSS is often thought of as like a guess and check coding language. You write a line of CSS code, and then you hope it works. When it doesn't, you try something different. And this process works, but it wastes a lot of time for things that are usually very simple. If you take some time to really understand what each of these major CSS layout properties do, you'll find that you spend almost no time converting a design to CSS code. For instance, creating a two-dimensional grid should be just as second nature as creating a for loop in JavaScript. And along with CSS layout comes the next skill to learn, and that's responsive design and mobile-first development. About half of web traffic comes from mobile devices. Of course, this can vary drastically based on the type of website you build, but the point is we are far beyond the days of seeing mobile users as these fringe users. In most cases, it's not enough for a mobile site to just kind of work. It should feel like your page was built with mobile in mind. A core principle you can learn from and apply here is going to be mobile-first development, which quite literally means developing the mobile version first, and then you scale it up for larger devices second. I actually really like this approach because it is usually much easier to scale a website up than it is to scale it down. The reason for this is quite intuitive. When you scale a website up, you just have extra space to potentially utilize to better organize the existing information. However, when you scale a website down, you might run out of space entirely, which is a much more difficult problem to solve. Okay, so now shifting gears a little bit, I want to talk about vanilla development. This just means developing without any additional libraries or frameworks. So no Bootstrap, no React, no Angular, just the core languages of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, you will likely never build a production application in this way, but I think it's incredibly important to learn how to do so. All of these libraries and frameworks are essentially just abstractions on top of vanilla development. The browser only understands these three languages, or at least for the most part, that's all they can understand. So as such, I am a firm believer that learning how to write vanilla code will help you make better decisions when you use these libraries. This also means that you will be a much more flexible developer because you can learn new frameworks and libraries much faster if you understand the vanilla code that they are meant to replace. Now, as you learn front-end development, you'll of course want to learn how to properly debug front-end code. I found that in school, I pretty much only ever learned debugging on the back-end, but there's so much more to debugging for front-end. You should become an expert in the Chrome or Firefox developer tools and really understand how to dissect your application. If you're having trouble with CSS layout, you should know how to quickly toggle styles and visualize the layout. If your JavaScript is causing bugs, you should know how to use the console and the debugger to your advantage. And if you run into issues communicating with the backend, learn how to use the network tab to inspect different requests being made, and of course, Learn how to use these tools to understand performance bottlenecks of your application 
and how to improve them. Next is pretty simple, and that's to learn how to write good tests. For whatever reason, it seems incredibly common for backend code to be deeply tested while frontend code has almost no test coverage at all. This is a bad practice, and it can lead to a maintenance nightmare as applications scale. Most of the testing libraries are pretty similar to each other, so just choose one and try to learn it. I personally really like Jest, but any of the others are fine as well. And with whatever library you choose, learn how to write unit tests to test specific components and functions, as well as learn how to write larger tests to ensure that the components are working properly together. You'll also want to learn to mock out backend behavior so that the front end can be tested in a way that assumes the back end is working properly. Although, of course, there's also going to be a time and a place for true end to end testing that makes back end requests from the front end. And with the back end in mind, also learn some back end development. I have talked before about the importance of learning the basics of UX design since front-end developers are essentially a bridge between the design team and the engineering team. Well, the same is true for back-end development. For one, you might just need to make back-end changes from time to time, as it's pretty rare to find a job where you only do front-end work. Additionally, you will be working with back-end developers to decide how the front-end and back-end of the application need to communicate with each other. In order to be a true asset to these discussions, you should not just understand what the front-end will need to work, but you should also understand what limitations the backend developers are working with. As a starting point, I'd recommend learning Node.js and Express just because it's extremely simple to set up a basic server if you already know JavaScript. And with that said, I hope you found these tips helpful. If you want to see more of my tips for quickly learning front-end development, then check out this video here. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe for future content, and I will see you in the next video.